G'day Bifrosters. Really quickly we're just going to run through setting up a random value array and what you can do with it. I'm using the rig from the negate node cookie. So we've still got, we're getting our normals, we're negating them and we're putting them out again. What I want to show with the random value array is how I can randomize the length of these normals. Okay, it's just as an example, you can use it for so many other things. So we're just going to use this rig as we did. I'm going to leave the negate stuff here. And I'm but I'm not going to use it too much and pop it down. Down here, I'm going to go and get the normals again. You know, I need to type more letters. Get point normal. Oops, and that's of course going to break because I put it in the wrong place. So we just throw that back in there so we're all, everybody's happy and we can see things. So what I need to do now is set up a random value array. My goal here is to vary the length of these normals. Why would you want to vary the length of the normals? I don't know. That's not the point of the lesson. <laughs> what I'm showing you is how you can if you want to. So the very first thing I'm going to need to do is get a size out of here. Because I need an array of values. This at the moment is giving me the size of the array of point normals. Then I can make a random value array, which is our node for today. Let's throw this into the size. So this is creating a array of random values of the size and size here means how many in the array. So if I wanted to go and check out how many normals we had on this, I'll add a watch point here, we can take a look. It's not gonna show me anything because I need to switch that on. At the moment we have 362 normals in the sphere. So I'll leave that down here and just remember that number. Back to random value array. So this is creating a random value array of this many things using this seed. I'm not going to go into how seeds work. I will later on when I do the more sort of coding based videos, but for now we're just going to take it on faith that the seed will change the random values that come out. And then offset. Offset's very important for a random value array. Not only does it tell you the minimum and maximum of the array, in this case, because it's set to zero, they will be coming at a zero to one, as it says here, but it controls what kind of values come out. So for example, this at the moment is generating a random array of floats because this is a float. If I was to change the value type here to a vector, you can see down at the bottom, that is now an array of math float three. Change it back to float because I just want floats today. And that works with float fours. It works with matrices. You see the, the color changed again. But today we just want floats because what I want to do is change the length of those normals. So right now I have a random value array between zero and one. Let's say I don't really want that. Well, I don't want that. I know I don't want that. What I want, and I'll use my set range node here. What I want is an array between one and two, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the normals from here and then reset them back, back onto the object. So that's just a matter of changing our parameters to zero to one is what is what's coming out of here now. I want to change that to the minimum of one and a maximum of two. And now I have my array coming out. Let's grab our normals. We're going to multiply them by that amount. And now what we need to do is we'll just use the set point normal here. Oh no, that is the negated one. We'll make another set point normal on the false case of this, which is what we're seeing at the moment. If you check this, this is false. So what we're seeing is just the normals going through. If I was to turn that on, they jump inside because of the negate we set up. I'm just going to do a set point normal over here. The normals will disappear. And then I will plug in our new random normals. And so you can see the normals are a random length now. And that's what a random value array will do for us. Now I can I can change this very quickly. I can go say from two, they're all two now, two to six. And you've got these strands representing our normal vectors, which is great. And of course, them being normals, if I wanted to, I could just grab this vector here and I could normalize it. And that will go back to zero to one. Okay, so that's that's a really, really quick overview of the random value of array. Um, let's just go quickly through what we did. We'll move this stuff out of the way because this was what we did in the last lesson. 
What we did is we got the point normals from our platonic solid. We made a new array based on the size of the normals, the number of normals in this array. Do you remember the number down here? 362. Let's double check that. Let's see what size our new array is. And there it is. 362. So this is making a new array filled with random numbers between 0 and 1. And that array is 362 values, which is the same as our normals, the number of values. Okay, we're then taking that array and setting its range from 0 to 1, which is what it is here, to between 2 and 6. If I drop a watch point here, you can see that the minimum is 2 and the maximum is 6. We're then multiplying the point normals that come from the object with this value and setting them back onto the object. Then we run them through an if, it creates strands along normals so we can see them and output them. So that's a really quick overview of random value array. I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.